Hello, somebody asked a question about how to select a proper size air conditioner. I happen to be working on a PowerPoint presentation on that very topic, so let's do it. As the slide on the screen says, and I'm trying to do two things at once that I'm not very good at. I'm trying to find a laser pointer. There we go. We're going to pick an air conditioner. We did a load calculation. This is our sensible gain. This is our latent gain. This is our total gain. This is our heat loss up here. Right now we're doing selecting an air conditioner. So there is our, our gain. Our design temperature, I used Long Branch, New Jersey because it's close to the, the host of the class that I'm doing on Monday. 90 is our summertime uh, outdoor temperature, uh, wet bulb 73. Outdoor humidity at 90 degrees, 45%. I think I have some stuff popping up here. There we go. And 50%, we're a green grass climate, 75 inside. 30 grains difference. Where's 90? This is a piece of equipment that I randomly selected off of the internet. Uh, 90 isn't on here. So what we do is a thing called interpolation. Uh, we potentially could be selecting our equipment to run at 800, 1,000, or 1,200 CFM. Based off the numbers I already saw, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a two and a half ton piece of equipment. So in order to interpolate, we take 85 and 95 and take that information and combine it. This is a, a good shot of what we did. We took our capacities total and our Sensible capacities at 85 and 95, 5, added them together, divided by 2. So here's my total capacity at 90, my sensible capacity at 90, and we solve for latent by taking our sensible from our total. And someday I'm going to remember to turn these laser pointers on before I actually start. So this is just showing a, a larger version of what we saw on the previous screen. The difference is I have my 1000 CFM example here and a 1200 CFM example here, and we'll see what Manual S uh, tries to get us to, to use as far as airflow goes. So like this really cool little image I found says, hold up, uh, what's our target airflow supposed to be? And we're gonna get guidance from Manual S. I really like this, and I dug this out of, I wanna say Manual D if I'm remembering correctly. But it, it, I, I get a sharp pain in my side every time somebody says they got to use 350 a ton because of where they're located. That's not the guidance in the design series. It's pretty simple. So Manual J up here is, is telling us that our sensible heat ratio is going to dictate what our airflow is supposed to be. And our sensible heat ratio is calculated by taking our total and dividing them into our sensible BTUs from our load calc. 350 a ton is appropriate when you got a wet freaking house, right? A sensible heat ratio of 0.7. Where your house is located isn't necessarily going to dictate that number. It's how leaky the house is. Next, we got 400 CFM per ton, that rule of thumb that I hate it. Uh, it gives us direction. If your sensible heat ratio of your house is around 0.8, well then 400 is good. And then this is going to be more appropriate from my experience because I would say that 90% or more of the load calcs that I do have a sensible heat ratio north of 0.9. And it doesn't matter if I'm doing them in San Diego, San Antonio, Houston, um, Mobile, or in Saskatchewan. The majority of the load calcs I do all come out with sensible heat ratios that are north of 0.85. And the house is going to benefit from a higher airflow per ton. We have to make a conscious decision. Do we want to have better performance on part load days or on when it's real hot? But run 350 a ton arbitrarily, we're going to struggle to maintain temperature when it gets real hot. And as long as the customer understands that, fine. Uh, I think more people uh, get pissed because it's hot, as in it's going above 75 degrees when it's hot outside. Uh, maybe that's just me. But this right here is in print. This is uh, part of the actual standard. Uh, it's uh, non-negotiable, damn it. All right. So here's our load. 
the cooling sizing procedure goes as follows. We're going to determine our sensible heat ratio of the structure, total into sensible, and this is the math for this particular house. We have a sensible heat ratio of 0.88. So we use the cool charts that are in manual S, or at least in the old manual S. Um, we do a little bit of math. Our target delta T is not the magic 20 that we were all taught. In this case, our target delta T would be 17 degrees, which is going to give us a target airflow of 1242. That doesn't mean that's what we actually have to run it at. We have a difference here of plus or minus 15 percent. So somewhere around 1000 to 1400 CFM is going to be our target airflow. We don't want to go over more than 15 percent of that for a single stage piece of equipment. All right, so that's our, our cap, if you will. That right there, and if we take this times 0.9, uh, we, we can install a piece of equipment that's 90% of our calculated requirement, and that's fine and dandy. Uh, that's, I've, I've read numerous times people talking about the smallest defensible size. There it is. Uh, that right there is good. Remember, there's potential to struggle on peak days, not even peak days, design days. But as long as your customer is fine with it, that's fine. And I think they're going to be happy more of the time if we follow this guidance than if we're going to put in stuff that's larger. Yes, there is stuff in manual S that talks about 20 and 30 percent oversizing, and that would be two stage and variable volume equipment. Don't ever let the phrase, it's OK, I oversized it, I'm putting in multi-stage equipment, come out of your puss because you're not following good design practices if that's what you're doing. Again, fancy layout, 1,000, 1,200 CFM. These are our interpolated capacities of our equipment. And this is the way it works out. At 1,000 CFM, I am, I don't know, I hope this works. There it goes. My total's covered, all right? This is my capacity. This is my gain. This is bigger than this. This, right, my capacity is not bigger than my sensible gain. My latent's definitely covering it, and I have excess. The guidance in manual S is to take your excess latent capacity, which that's what we have right here. Our total latent capacity is 5,800. Our calculated latent gain is 3,278. I have 2,522 20, yeah, 2, BTUs of excess capacity. I'm going to divide that by two. Again, that's the guidance in manual S. Gives me 1,261 BTUs. So I'm going to take that 1,261 plus my 2,145, which was my calculated or interpolated capacity. And it gives me 22,711 sensible BTUs. I'm close, but I'm not 100% meeting my sensible gain. But it absolutely covers, and the guidance in S is as long as it covers, man, you're you're there with the 1200 CFM application. And this is on a two and a half ton piece of equipment. We got uh, covered, covered, covered. Right. So we're, we're doing everything that we need to do. When was the last time you thought you would hear 1200 CFM for two and a half tons? 400 CFM per ton, my friends, is beer can cold, right? You don't charge equipment that way. You don't select equipment using the beer can cold method. So there it is right there. That is a uh, 036 indoor coil. That is uh, an 030 outdoor section. I don't care if it says 036 on it. In my mind, that is a two and a half ton coil because look at our capacity. Oh, I don't want those numbers. I like the numbers under my 67, 70, or yeah, that's 67, 75, 62 down along here. These are the numbers I'm supposed to be using. And it's it's a two and a half ton air conditioner, nominally, and it doesn't even make two and a half in our ter interpolated capacity. I think I'm exceeding 500 CFM per ton with my selection. And I like it. And I think that last slide kind of ended abruptly. I'm still getting used to recording this stuff, but I think I'm getting better. If you want to see more of this content, say, hey, Ed, I want to see more of this content. And I will see you folks later.